Visit our YouTube channel at Max TV. Click on the subscribe button and be the first to get notifications on our uploads. Following allegations of corruption and poor management of the presidential amnesty program, President Muhammadu Buhari recently approved the suspension of Professor Charles Dokubo as coordinator of the program. In this report, correspondent Chika Abodizie examines a trend of alleged abuse of office by successive managers of the presidential amnesty program. Professor Dokubo's suspension follows the recommendation of a committee set up to probe activities of the presidential amnesty program under his watch. The Professor of Strategic Studies and former Acting Director of Research at the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs had been accused of abuse of office by several interest groups in the Niger Delta. The suspended coordinator of the presidential amnesty program was in the eye of the storm after hoodlums vandalized and looted the program's vocational training center warehouse and training kits and starter packs procured for beneficiaries of the scheme. The Kayama incident in February 2019, which cost the federal government billions of naira, was linked to Professor Dokubo, but he quickly dismissed allegations of his involvement in the incident as mischievous and unfounded. Few weeks after, in March 2019, a six-man special investigative panel was set up to ascertain the remote and immediate causes of the incident and identify those behind the criminal act. The panel was given seven working days to submit its report. Curiously, nothing has been heard of its findings till date. Over the years, successive coordinators of the presidential amnesty program have been accused of malfeasance with none prosecuted so far. Professor Dokuba's appointment two years ago came with the sack of Brigadier General Paul Boro retired over allegations of fraud. After Boro's sack, President Buhari directed his national security advisor, Babagana Monguno, to investigate allegations of financial impropriety in the amnesty program from 2010 to 2015. It is interesting to note that the outcome of that investigation is still not in the public domain. In July 2018, Boro's predecessor in office, Mr. Kingsley Kuku, was invited by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to explain his role in an alleged fraud, but he failed to honor the invitation on health grounds and has remained outside the shores of the country till date. With outcomes of previous investigations into activities of the Presidential Amnesty Office yet to be declared public, there are fears that the current investigation is just an exercise in futility. This is a scenario that gives most Niger Deltans cause for worry. By February 2014, the presidential amnesty program had reportedly gulped a whooping 243 billion naira in just five years of its existence. While it has successfully halted constant attacks on oil platforms by armed insurgents, the program has failed to enthrone lasting peace in the Niger Delta. The tardiness characterizing the ongoing peace process in the Niger Delta is in spite of the fact that the presidential amnesty program was originally conceived by the Yaradwa administration to last a period of five years from 2010 to 2015. Recall that on the assumption of office in May 2015, President Buhari had attempted to phase out the amnesty program by December that year. After consultations with groups in the region, Notably, the Pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF, Mr. President decided to carry on with the program and promised to strengthen it to achieve desired results. To this end, allocation of the presidential amnesty program was increased to 55 billion naira in the 2017 budget, from a paltry 20 billion it received in 2016. With more funds at its disposal, the Amnesty Office was able to pay all ex-agitators backlog of their stipends up to the end of 2016. The gesture was said to be in line with President Buhari's new vision for the Niger Delta. With the recent turn of events in the presidential amnesty program, it however appears the president's vision may not go far enough to address real issues militating against sustained peace and security in the Niger Delta if drastic measures are not taken to retool the program. As many observers of the ongoing peace process now ask, what is the guarantee that the ad hoc committee appointed to oversee activities of the amnesty program 
will not be tarred with same brush of corruption. Has there been any attempt to identify and deal with the conditions giving rise to alleged abuse of office by successive administrations in the presidential amnesty program? Like the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, the presidential amnesty program is viewed as a source of easy money by some idle youths and a section of the political class in the Niger Delta. Obviously, there's an urgent need for the federal government to begin to address real factors preventing the amnesty program from achieving its aim and objectives in the Niger Delta, rather than focus on symptoms of maladministration that have plagued the system in the last 10 years. Inside the Niger Delta, 